Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? He won't. He 
Sunday, another opportunity to brag on the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for you tuning in on us and checking us out. And we praise you and we thank you for your comments, your likes, and your amen. And we just bless God today. We thank him for his goodness to us. And here at Dove Church on tomorrow, starting 724, we are having a VBS summer program and uh, you're invited to attend uh, bring some kids it's going to be a good time in the Lord and we just thank God for you please turn my volume up we thank God for you and we thank God for, for your constant listenership and so we just ask you to continue to pray for us seed into this ministry uh, as it is good ground amen and so with that said, we move fastly into the word of God. Everybody with your Bibles in your hand. Everybody with your Bible in your hand or wherever they are on whatever device. Repeating after me, this is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging Word of God. So my mind is alert and my heart receptive as I gladly receive the Word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we bless you. And we praise you for the things that are freely given to us of the Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, we ask that you would help us to speak as an oracle of you today. Put us on our best mind. Speak Holy Spirit through us. Guide and direct. Now, Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And they all said, Amen. Well, today we're going to talk from the subject, spiritual wisdom. Spiritual wisdom. Spiritual wisdom. We talked about kingdom wisdom and worldly wisdom last week. And so today we're going to talk about spiritual wisdom and how important that is. It's a good, solid teaching. Get ready to, to get it. We're going to give a number of scripture. Each week, I sit down to prepare a message that is Holy Spirit-led and practical to your lives. Today's lesson 
is no different. Spiritual wisdom is one of the greatest gifts to the body of Christ or believers. Spiritual wisdom. It is something that you must become sensitive to in every part of your life. If the Bible declares that you should walk in the spirit, that means that you should be walking up on something. Spiritual wisdom. And spiritual wisdom is that thing as you walk in the spirit. Bring my bottom down a little bit. I'm too high pitched. Just bring my bottom down and I hear a little feedback. Spiritual wisdom is held at first in mystery. Everybody say mystery. mystery. And so that we will understand, we read things in scripture, and sometimes it's important that we, we, we uh, uh, define them as we go along so you will understand what it's talking about. So when we say it in a sentence, you know what we mean. Mystery. Mystery is that which is beyond human comprehension. That which is beyond human comprehension until it is revealed or explained. Beyond human comprehension until it is revealed or explained. Key to spiritual wisdom is the mystery of how God brought Jesus into the world born of a virgin. That was a mystery. Amen. Amen? Because this mystery defies natural comprehension. Amen. A baby and virgin don't necessarily go together. A baby from a virgin, they don't go together. Amen? Amen. Because in our thinking, there should be a man from the earth involved with a woman on the earth. But it was not so with the way God chose to bring Jesus into the world and it is held in mystery. He told us he was coming. He said what he would look like. He said what his job description was. But he didn't give us a blow by blow for how he was going to bring Jesus into the world. We knew how he was going to deliver him to the world, but the mystery is how he did it. And it was revealed to us after the baby showed up. Because this baby could not have had a natural man flesh father. Because this baby was going to pay for all the sins of the world. So he had to be without a sin nature that was born in. From the line of natural man. It's a mystery. We accept it. We call it not only a mystery, but we call it a miracle. Amen. But childbirth itself, although people say it's the miracle of childbirth, it is not a miracle. Miracles don't occur. Certain miracles don't occur thousands and thousands and thousands of times. It's natural. God placed it in natural man to have children. So it's not a miracle. Not when the right components come together. It's natural. Do, do, do you read me? Now, 
The mystery of God's spiritual wisdom was so precise that 1 Corinthians 2 and 8 tells us something. Get that. 1 Corinthians 2 and 8. Second Corinthians. Everything is in New King James today. First Corinthians. I'm sorry. Two and eight. <coughs> and and well, well, except for this one. This this is in the Amplified, but you can read along with it in your New King James. It said. None of the rulers of this, meaning that time, age, recognized and understood this wisdom. What wisdom? The wisdom of how God was going to bring Jesus into the world and how Jesus was going to die on the cross for us. And he was successful in his act. Amen. Jesus was a successful savior. Somebody ought to be happy about that. Jesus was a success. Now, and then it goes on to say, for if they, meaning the rulers of that age, that Jesus came into, if the rulers, if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. That means if they understood what was going on and what was getting ready to happen, they wouldn't have crucified Jesus. Because the enemy always wants to know what the next move is and the plan. And God did not give it to the enemy. He held it in mystery. Somebody all say amen. amen. They'd have thought twice about crucifying. If I knew he was going to deliver all those people, they were going to get saved. They were going to get free. They were going to come out of sin. I'd have let him live. The Bible says they wouldn't have crucified. But they did because the mystery of what God was doing was held only with God. And you ought to get excited about that. There's some stuff about you that God is holding to himself. You're not finished. Because in him is your next. In him is your next. Amen. Amen. And, and right now, it's not revealed, so it's a mystery. So don't let the enemy mess with you. He's not omniscient. He doesn't know everything. Amen. And we act like he does. We act like he's controlling our fate. He knows everything getting ready to happen. The enemy got in my way. No, some things are a mystery with God. What God has for you is still a mystery until it's revealed. Amen. And by the time it's revealed, it's too late for the enemy to do anything about it. Amen. Are you out there? Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Say this with me. God, God. keep my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm glad he can keep it. And he doesn't tell it either. God keeps your stuff. Amen. When we share the mystery of God, that being how we were saved, we are sharing his spiritual wisdom. If I could borrow a line from one of the temptation group's song, it says, the way you do the things you do. 
God is the only one that can do certain things a certain way. And he doesn't tell you how he's going to do it. You know why? You think you would be better off because God tells you what he's doing next. Well, sometimes he doesn't tell you what he's doing next is because you would frustrate your own victory. You would meddle in it. You would say, no, nah, what about if we do it a little bit like this? Turn to somebody and tell them God doesn't need your help. Stop trying to help it. Because the Bible says his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And some of the ways he does stuff, he makes a way, but, but he's so creative, he never makes the same way twice. But he's still defined as a deliverer. Amen? Because he still makes the way. Well, that was the introduction. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 10 is our text for this message. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 10. Now it's New King James Version. And you know, usually I read it and then we go back and unpack it and give it everyday application. And, and here is that reading. But as it is written, eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. I want, I want to go back and, 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 and I want you to repeat this with me. The things. Stop right there. That means it's just not one of something. God has many things prepared for you. Say amen, somebody. You ought to get happier than that. Because you've gotten some things, but you're not through getting some things. Amen. Anybody tired of getting stuff? Anybody tired of blessings? Are you tired of blessings? Don't be like some of my, uh, my kids. They, were, they had so many presents to lay. They said, I'm tired of opening them. Can I open up some tomorrow? <laughs> Don't get tired of getting blessed. I want you to get used to accommodating blessings. Because God's got your stuff. Woo. Have mercy, Holy Ghost. He's got your stuff. And, and the enemy don't know about it. But he knows one thing, that God wants to bless you. Woo. He knows that. And when he finally blesses you, the Bible says... He prepares a table before you in the what? So, so when it's time to, for you to be blessed, he don't sit the table down in a ditch. He sits it out in front of him. All the stuff you like. That's theirs. This is theirs. He puts it out in plain view. And it's too late for him to do anything about it. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Let me finish reading. It said, he has prepared for those who love him. That means if you love him, you honor and obey him. See, we want to get prepared for things, but we don't want to love God through it. And in it. Okay. That wasn't, that didn't. And he, then it goes on to say, but God has revealed them through, to us through his spirit. 
For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Said a whole lot in there, and we're going to unpack it. Paul opens this text with a reference that's a first mention from something that is said back in the Old Testament. In Isaiah 64 and 4. Here it is. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, nor has the eye seen any God besides you, who acts for the one who waits for him. Isn't that good? Amen. So 700 plus years later, Paul picks it up and says, I have not seen nor ear heard what God has prepared for them. God is consistent in what he says. In this case, he uttered it years ago. But it was, it's meant for that day and it's meant for this day. Let's go back and unpack it. Our text says this. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man. You can't even imagine what God has for you. And you all can imagine some good stuff. How many of you got an active imagination? I'm going to show you how active your imagination is. When you imagine your dream car, what do you imagine? A Bentley. Some fast people said a Mustang. Mustang. What else? Ferrari. Jag. Audi. Now, out of all those cars that you you hollered out, if you have that car, lift your hand. Okay. If you got a Chevy, so you don't have to imagine that if you got it. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. And sometimes the enemy want to lock you into a limited imagination. But God is saying through this scripture that it hasn't even entered into your heart. That means you haven't reached re that level of imagination that's so high till it's beyond everything you can think about. Come on, somebody. Come on. It have, you haven't even thought about Some of the stuff God is getting ready to bless you with, you haven't even thought about it. And I just use cars as illustration, but, but some of the things God can bless you with is stuff that creeps up on you. You didn't know it was coming. And it shows up. A letter canceling something. You didn't expect it. It showed up. Come on, come on. That didn't enter your heart because you didn't know how to let it in. Come on. Woo. You all gonna get this in a minute. The things which and and that thing that 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 has not entered into your heart is already prepared in God. Ooh. How do I know it? The things which God has, the things that are in mystery with God. Are a has. He's not waiting for you to imagine it for it to show up. 
it has been prepared. My mother used to cook dinner on Saturday for Sunday. So she didn't go in getting ready for dinner on Sunday, cooking and frying and baking and all that kind of stuff because the dinner had been prepared. So what's coming to you is something that God has already finished doing. It's already hidden with him. He, it's hidden. he knows where he's looking at you and he's looking at it. And, 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 and if I could say it like this, God is saying, I wish they would come on and pick up their stuff. Because I'm tired of looking at it. Because if they could come pick it up, I could make room for some more. Go pick up your stuff. So in that scripture is two truths. Men have not seen or heard from any God but you. Let's start on that page. Both of those scriptures says, love God. And who wait for him. So you've got to acknowledge there is no God but God. See, let's get the business straight. You want a lot of stuff from a lot of places, but you want to act as if you are working with a, 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 a smorgasbord of gods. The God of work. The God of paychecks. The God of benefits. The God of checking accounts and saving accounts. You're working with some other God, but you have, at some point you have to just acknowledge you God. It's only one. You all going to work with me a little bit here? Yeah. The second truth joins Isaiah 64 and 1 Corinthians 2 and 9 together. And it says, and, and, and here's the conjunction. Who act, act in parenthesis by preparing things in advance for the one who waits and loves him. God acts for the one who waits and loves him. That's both of them. It's still a mystery what he's holding for you. But the scripture says that mysteries are slated for revelation. Everything that is in mystery will be revealed sometime in the future. Ooh. All the mysteries of this world, when you cross into eternity, they will be revealed. Come on. Nothing will be hidden from you. Ooh. But God is so good, he lets you peep at some revealed stuff now. And what is it, preacher? It's a preview of a coming attraction. Just like the sign says, coming soon. Anybody been in the show lately and they show you previews of movies coming out? You get excited at the preview. And sometimes when God brings revelation to you, he's giving you a preview of what you're going to have forever. Amen. 
Deuteronomy 29 and 29. Deuteronomy 29 and 29. When you have it, say amen. Or look up at the screen. It said there, the secret things belong to the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of this law or the book. As long as it's a secret or a mystery, it is held with God. But once it is revealed, the ownership for it transfers to you. The revealed thing belongs to you. Somebody ought to get excited at that. It's mine because God showed it to me. I'm not guessing about it anymore. It's mine. I didn't understand before, but once I got to understanding, it was mine. How many of you sat down to take a test? And the whole test was a mystery. Yeah. <laughs> it was a mystery. You were in the lecture, you read the book, but the test is a mystery. Come on, I knew you'd laugh at that. Anybody that's a student. Every one of us had them subjects that we had to just work on, pray on. And we prayed for the just minimal grade we could get out of there. And I know you sat at the desk at test time and said, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Be merciful to me. You, you, you asked him, you repented of everything. So you could get grace to go on through. It, now I know all of y'all are, are, are summa cum laude, magna cum laude, and, and some of y'all are just old laude. But uh, <laughs> anybody ever just pray to get a C? In, in that class. Because the C is passing. I don't want to go backward, Lord. And I don't want to, 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 to repeat it. And I, I've already paid for this class. <laughs> Classes are expensive. And F's are expensive. Are you out there? See, I, I'm, I'm in the right place. So once it's revealed, it belongs to you. Thank you, Jesus. This simple truth make me know that the devil does not know what God is planning for you. Stop giving him more credit than he deserves. Come on, come on. The devil keep blocking my, he don't know what God has planned for you. All he keeps trying to do is frustrate you, make you upset because he don't have an idea what God wants to do with you. But he's hoping to hit the target. But he don't know. You think he knows, but he don't know. But he sniffs out that you're about to be successful. Because you keep praising God. You keep thanking God. You keep going through. 
and something happened that didn't kill you and didn't frustrate you so much till you denied God. He said, he said, I, 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 I know the signs of this. They close up on something. So he tries to frustrate you and stop you. Oh, you know when you're getting close to it because it seems like all hell is busting loose. Come on, am I in the right house? Everything goes wrong, and it don't go wrong Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It go wrong Monday in the morning, Monday at noon, and Monday in the evening. But don't be dashed. Your blessing is a mystery hell with God. And the devil don't know. Because just like them other boys, had he known he wouldn't have crucified Jesus. But he didn't know. He didn't know that 2,000 years later, you'd be sitting on, in a church on the corner of military and Horatio, saved and free. Preparing to live a life of victory. And one day going home with the Lord. Yes. To bow down and worship as thousands before. Yes. Yes. He didn't know that. Or else he wouldn't have killed Jesus. You mean I made them worship? You mean I guaranteed that they would live with him forever? I would have left that old boy alive. Oh God. But the devil don't know. You ought to get excited about that. You ought to get glad that he don't know. Because the secret things, hallelujah, belong to God. But once it's revealed, it's mine on mine. It's mine. Oh, you're going to get something in a minute. You need to go back and remind yourself of some of the things that God has done for you. Because that means he reveals some stuff to you. I was thinking one day, last night, well, one day, it was last night. I, I'm getting older now, and, and one day and last night, probably the same thing. <laughs> Have you ever ordered something by mail and later forgotten all that you ordered until it showed up? Don't you say nothing, girl. You've forgotten it until it, it show up and... But then when it shows up, you want to make sure you got everything you ordered. You pull out the receipt to be assured of what you had ordered. And I want to tell you as believers, you need to know what has already been ordered and given to you. You need to pull the receipt out and check it again to see what you got. Amen. Some days you act like you missed something. But it's ordered for you. Yes. Well, you're looking at me like I'm crazy. What has he ordered? And what has he prepared for you? What, 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 is it, what has he established for you? Here comes a rundown. Psalm 31, 19. Oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared for those prepared. Prepared. For those who trust in you in the presence of the Son of Man. Prepared for you. Psalm 37 and 4. 
Delight yourself also. I like how it says also. Because you delight yourself in a lot of stuff. But it could come on. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. This is what you got. Then Ecclesiastes 3, 14 says, I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it, and nothing can be taken from it. God does it that men should fear before him. You should get reverently respectful at how great God does what he does. It ought to humble you. When you get blessed, that's not the time to get a thick neck or a puffed up chest or a fat head. It should humble you that you love me so much that you would do this for me. Make ways out of no way. Pick me up and turn me around. Heal me. Cancel my debts. My God, my God. Isaiah 25 and 9. And it will be said in that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him, and we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. God, we have waited for him. We do wait for him. We're doing it all the time. We're waiting on the Lord. My God. I'm trying to be cool. Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. What is he thinking about you? Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. See, you got to know what God tells you he know because it's a revealed thing. What he knows is that he wants to give you hope. And he wants to give you a future. I don't know why you're trying to die. I don't know why you're trying to constantly be defeated. When he says, I'm giving you hope and a future. People, the only people that need a future are those who are going to keep living. Are you going to keep living? Come on. If you're going to keep living, lift up a hand. Show me you're going to keep living. Now lift up the other one. Stop holding yourself like you're about to escape. He's talking to you. I know the plan. I have for you and the thoughts of peace and not evil now you must trust that the mystery hidden in spiritual wisdom will deliver the thing you don't know about to you. You must trust God over you in what you don't know that he has for you. You got to trust him. Don't jump the gun. Don't have a false start. Trust God. We know that whatever he's getting ready to do 
It's for his glory. That's why that glory song that we sung other, it messed me up. Uh, for his glory. I needed to explain what glory means. You got a minute? Yeah, for two of y'all, here it comes. <laughs> what is the benefit of glory? First of all, glory illuminates. What was dark, he shines the light on. Number two, glory is weighty. Anything that has value to it like gold weighs something. A friend was looking at something I had purchased for someone. It was a necklace, and they said, Oh man, that's good. It's heavy, it's got weight to it. So glory is weighty. Come on. Oh my God. Things that are good have weight to them. Silver is weightier than stainless steel. Oh. And the glory of God, when it comes in, it's weighty. I'm going somewhere. That's why when they dedicated the temple in the Old Testament, Solomon's temple, when they went inside of it, they were worshiping. How did they know that the glory of the Lord had entered? They saw a cloud. But that's not how they knew. It was a sign that it was coming or was with them. But how did they really know? Because once the weight of the glory came into the room, it leveled everybody in the room. Because the glory has weight. See, when the glory came into the room today, some of you stooped over because you, you, you weren't that bad. You can't hold up under. Now, if you disconnected, it was just, ah, 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 they just singing a song and hallelujah, la, 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 I'm playing with this and looking at that. But when you connect it, and when you understand that there was a shift, the glory sits on. <laughs> because it's weighty. Yeah. The next thing about glory, it shines brightly because it's pure light. And the enemy hates pure light. So when Jesus announced to them, I am the light of the world, it messed him up. The next thing, the glory clears up cloudy places, making it possible for you to become a clear reflection of the light of God. You got to get cleared up. Some stuff got to come out of you. Your glass got to get white. The next thing about his glory, the weight of it is eternal. Eternal. 
you need his glory. Because that place is full of his glory. And if you know glory now, you will know it later. And God says, I'm taking you into deeper glory. How? I'm taking you from glory to glory to glory. What is he doing? He's creating more weight on you. If glory is weight, it's just like the person in the gym who at first all they can lift up is, 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 a, is a couple five pound weights and they wearing them out. Then God says, I'm taking you to the next glory and you graduate to something else. Because you're used to the weight of glory. <laughs> He's increasing you because he doesn't want you to stay the same. So he's taking you from glory to glory. So, so, so as I round out the ending of this message, what is it you need to be praying for in spiritual wisdom? And, and, and Paul prayed for it. That you would get the mysteries revealed to you. That you would get your stuff. It comes through prayer. And if you have an aversion not to pray, you will never get it. Because some things go out by prayer and fasting. Oh. It's not wishful thinking. It's not a lottery drawing. It's praying into the next. Paul, anointed, chosen by Jesus, had an experience filled with the Holy Spirit. He said, you still need to pray for spiritual wisdom. Because if you don't, you'll rely on your wisdom. And your wisdom isn't enough. Ephesians 1, 15 through 18. Ephesians 1. 15 through 18. Therefore, or from this point forward, that's what that means. I also, Paul saying, me too. After I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. In what? The knowledge of him. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Yes. Paul prayed that you wake up. That your vision clears up. Yes. 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 That you stop looking like the world. Yes. And start looking into glory. Yes. That you experience the glory 
of God, which has been given to you as an inheritance. It's bequeathed to you. It's been given to you. So that you will be, so you would have everything that was in mystery, now it's revealed. God wants you to get your stuff. So get your stuff. Turn to somebody and say, get your stuff. <laughs> it's been held in mystery too long. It's time for it to come out. How do you get it out? By faith in it out. By praying it out. Lord, help me to see what I can't see. Help me to know what I don't know. Give me the answer. Whenever I lose something, I pray and ask God to help me find it. And I usually find it. Help me see because I can't function without your wisdom. I can't function without the Holy Spirit teaching me because it searches the mind of God. It knows where the deep stuff is and it brings it up and delivers it to me. Pray for spiritual wisdom because you got to have stuff and it needs to be found. It needs to be found. It needs to be found. You're too mundane about your stuff. You want him to bless you anyhow. And it hasn't happened anyhow. What do you need? When do you need it? What do you need? When do you need it? Why do you need it? And he's not going anywhere whipping up nothing for you. It's already done. Give him a good praise in this. Hour. Come on, you can do better than that. Give him a good praise. Thank him that it's already done. It's already possible. So we thank him. And we bless him. And we give him praise. If you heard this message today, ask of the Lord who will freely give to you what you need. If you have not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, it's available to you today. Give it to him. And while the, the folk in this room repeat the same statement, also if you're in this room and you haven't surrendered your life to the Lord, it's available to you. Let's go on and make this, this confession with him. Father, in Jesus' name, I repent of sin and I give you my life. Come into my heart, Jesus. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I believe in a miracle that one day you died on a cross. And three days later, you were raised from the dead to the glory of God. On that confession and with this faith, I am saved. Amen. If you prayed that prayer or if you're in this house and prayed that prayer, Dove Church is a good place to be. 4660 Military at the corner of a ratio. Come, we'd be glad to have you. And until next week, 
God bless you. God keep you. Thank you for looking in on us. We trust that something was said that will help you. Remember that the secret things belong to God, but the revealed things belong to us. Come on, give God a good praise. Come on, you can do better than that. Hallelujah. Amen. How many were blessed today? Did you get something? To all of our viewers, we are so grateful for the time that you spent with us today. We trust that this presentation was a blessing to you. We pray that it inspires you and enhances your spiritual learning. Also, we encourage your financial support of this ministry as we continue to reach the world, knowing that God will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, and that will take you to our PayPal page. Thanks again. God bless you, and we hope to see you soon.